In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to find the correlation coefficient R using our Sharp EL531 calculator. Uh, so, similar to how we did standard deviation with our calculator before, the first thing that we'll need to do is put our calculator in stats mode. So we'll choose mode, and for the mode we want stats mode. So if you're not already in stats mode, that would be our first move. And we have three options, as we had before. There was SD, line, and quad. SD, remember this is if we have univariate data and we're just looking to find standard deviations and means. Line is if we have linear data, and that's what we have. So I'll be choosing stat mode number one. And that's what it says up here, stat one, reminding me that I'm in that linear stat mode. Now, the difference for entering our data from before, when we were entering univariate data, we would just use the M plus key as our enter key. And we'll still be doing that here, but now since we're entering pairs of points, we'll be entering them one after the other, the X value and then the Y value, and in between we'll be putting a comma. And how we put a comma in between, if you look at your calculator right here, right above the storage button, you'll see in the top left corner there a little comma. So when I enter my data for the first point, 4,512, and then comma, 1,530. And now I'll enter that data point in the calculator's memory, M+, plus, and I'll do the same thing with all the rest, 3,738, comma 1297 m plus 4261 comma 1335 m plus then we've got 3777 comma 1282 m plus notice that it's keeping a running tally here of how many data points are in the calculator's memory right now i've got four things in its memory and again, continuing along, 4,177, 1590. And that's all we're doing here, just entering X values, comma, Y values. So there's one more, 1300, M plus, 3785, comma, 1400, M plus, 3559, and 12, 55 m plus and then i've got 36 13 comma 13 55 m plus and then the last observation 3982 comma 1375 m plus uh, so a couple of things here if we were interested in the average of the X observations, in this case, the head size, I could find that with recall X bar number four. So the average head size, 3,898.9. And similarly, recall seven Y bar, that gives me the average of the Y values, the average of the brain masses. Recall SX gives me the standard deviation of the X values. Recall SY gives me the standard deviation of the Y values. And then what I'm really interested in here is the sample correlation coefficient. And that would be recall and then the little division sign. You'll see a little R above that. And there we go. It calculates for us that the correlation coefficient is 0.7276 if we were rounding it off. If I were interested in R squared, now that I have R, I can find R squared just by squaring it. And so for the brain mass data, R squared is 0.529. Um, so you could say 52.9% of the variation in brain mass is being explained by this linear model, uh, this linear relationship with head size. The other thing that we can find here, if we're thinking about the estimated regression line, the intercept and slope. That would be on our calculator A for the intercept and B for the slope. So if we wanted to create a regression line for this brain mass data, we could find that the intercept is recall A. The intercept would be 412.79. And the slope would be recall B, 
2499. So just to recap here, after we put ourselves in stat mode one, we enter our data using first observation, comma, second observation, and then M plus. The comma is hitting the storage button there. That's where the comma is. To find means for X's and Y's, that's the second, uh, that's the recall of four and seven. To find standard deviations for X and for Y, recall five, recall six. To find R, that's recall division. To find the intercept and slope, that's recall left bracket, recall right bracket. So for these data, you know that the, the value for R is 0.7276. You know that the intercept for the regression line, 412.79. You know that the slope for the regression line, 0.24599. The other thing that I wanted to mention again before I end this video, and this is the same thing as always, for this calculator, for stats mode, it will keep the calculations that you've put into it, the data that you've put into it, in the calculator's memory, and that will stay there even if you turn the calculator off and back on again. So you'll notice if I turn my calculator off and on, I can still recall R and it'll still tell me what the R value was for the data that I put in. If I want to clear out any old data, I have to use the CA, the clear all function, and I do that with second function CA. And now you can see if I went to recall N, it would confirm that there are no things in the calculator's memory. Remember that here at N, this was how we found our sample size. And so this is confirming to me that now, yes, my calculator has had all of the information that I've put into it taken out of its memory.